liberty today and forever. Multitudes come from over the entire nation to see and hear Evangelist Jack Coe, a man whose tremendous faith in God has brought healing to thousands of sick and suffering people. As the evening shadows fall, the people begin arriving at the world's largest tent. Hopelessly afflicted people who are often beyond all human aid are brought in wheelchairs and ambulances. meaning of these crutches that we see hanging here. Where did they come from? Keep your dial set on this channel for the next 30 minutes and you will learn the answer as evangelist Jack Coe, who has preached in the world's largest tents and auditoriums, will pray the prayer of faith that will bring God's healing power into their afflicted bodies right before your eyes, enabling them to leave the tent rejoicing and praising God. Join us now as we enter the world's largest tent to see an actual, authentic, unrehearsed service exactly as it happened. And now we present a man of great faith, the Reverend Jack Cole. discouraged and despondent. Seemed like the heavens was brass and you couldn't touch God. Have you ever prayed and prayed and never prayed? You prayed, come back, hit you in the face. The devil told you God didn't care, that he lost your number. I want to tell you the devil's a liar. God said, I'll never leave you, nor forsake you. Lo, I am with you always, even unto the end. Oh, I live. Bibles, turn with me tonight, and I'm reading a portion of Scripture found in the 27th chapter of Acts, and I'm beginning to read with the 20th verse. And when neither sun nor stars in many days appeared, and no small tempest laid on us, and all hope was gone, that we should then be saved was taken away. But after a long absence, Paul stood forth in the midst of them, and said, Sirs, you should have hearkened unto me, and not to have loosed from Crete to have gained this harm and this loss. Now I exhort you to be of good cheer, for there shall be no loss of any man's life among you but of the ship. For there stood by me this night the angel of God, whom I am and whom I serve, saying, Fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar, and lo, God has given, them, given you all them that sail with thee. Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God. Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God that it'll be exactly like he told me it'd be. 
You know, I want you to see a picture with me. Here's these men out on this boat, and for 14 days and 14 nights, they've neither seen the light by day, nor the stars, nor the moon by night. For 14 days and 14 nights, they'd sailed in darkness. And when all hope was gone, they took everything that was on board the boat and threw it overboard to try to lighten the ship. And the food was gone. The water was running out. For 14 days, they had to put a mouthful of food in their mouths. And the Bible said that all hope was gone. Have you ever gone as far as you could go? You didn't know what way to turn. You didn't know what to do next. I want to tell you, standing somewhere in the shadows, you'll find Jesus. The Bible said that all hope was gone when all the darkness of the darkness of the darkness was upon them. They knew they were going to die. Some man stood in the middle of the boat and said, Sir, you should have hearkened unto men not to have loosed from Crete. But he said, Be of good cheer. I imagine they thought, Who in the world let that fellow out of the asylum? What's wrong with him in a time like this when we haven't eaten a mouthful of food in 14 days to think that that man would stand in the middle of this boat and say, Be of good cheer. How could we be of good cheer in a time like this? But before they could open their mouths to say anything, Paul went ahead. And he said, Be of good cheer, for there stood by me this night the angel of God, whom I am and whom I serve. Brother, he knew who he belonged to. Do you know who you belong to? Yeah. said, That angel said unto me, Fear not, Paul, for you're going to be delivered. And I'm going to save the lives of every man that's with you. And he said, Now be of good cheer, for I believe God that it'll be exactly like he said it'd be. Now I want to tell you that I'm standing here. I don't care if every doctor has shook his head and folded his hands. I'm not criticizing doctors. But I'm saying that if you can do everything, if doctors have done everything in their power, they've gone as far as they can go, and they've tried every remedy. But I want to tell you there's hope in Jesus Christ, and I believe that God's Word will heal you after man's done everything he can do. I believe God. I said, I believe God. I believe it'll be exactly like he said it'd be. Somebody said, what do you believe? I believe exactly the promises that are in God's book. You sing every promise in the book is mine, every chapter, every verse, every line. What are the promises? Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth them out of them all who forgiveth all of my iniquities, who healeth all of my diseases. I believe God. I said, I believe God. Hallelujah. The Bible said, if you'll obey my commandments and keep my statues, I won't even let anything come upon you. As many as touched Jesus was made whole. All that came to Jesus was healed. Brother, I believe God. I believe God that it'll be exactly like he said it'd be. I'll never forget, I went over to Cairo, Egypt, down in Jerusalem. Some preachers asked me, said, would you go to Cairo and preach over Sunday? And I said, yes, I'll be glad to. I didn't know what kind of a church I was going to, nor who the pastor of the church was. All I had was the address. When I got to Cairo, Egypt, I was taken out to a small church. The congregation was small. I imagine it was somewhere around 50, maybe 60, maybe 75 people in the building. Down through the center of the building was a wall, and on one side sit the women, on the other side sit the men. Now, I'll never forget, I began to preach on divine healing, and the interpreter from Columbia University began to interpret what I was saying in the Egyptian language. And I preached on healing, and Jesus that could heal and open the eyes of the blind and cause the lame to walk. And I noticed one man would get up and go out of the church, and pretty soon 17 or 18 more people would come in. Finally, a woman would get up and leave the church, and 15 or 16 more would come in, and maybe 20 would come in and sit down. And the church kept filling up, and I finally turned to the interpreter, and I said, where are they all coming from? He said, it's what you're preaching on. He said, you're preaching a Jesus that can heal, and said, these people are getting up and going out on the street and finding more people and bringing them into the church. And finally, the church was packed and jammed with people, and people sitting on the floor and all up and down the aisles. When I finished my sermon and came to a close, I turned to the pastor and I said, now I'm going to blind the sick up and pray for him. He said, what do you mean? He said, just get up there and pray for him in a prayer. I said, no, I don't pray like that. I said, I pray like the Bible. The Bible said, anoint him with oil and the prayer of faith shall save the sick and the Lord shall raise him up. I said, I want to line him up and lay hands on him. 
but he said, you can't do that. He said, this is Cairo, Egypt, and he said, you can't do it. He said, I'll tell you, I know a place where you can do it tonight. But he said, don't do it in my church. He said, it'll disturb the whole service. And I said, well, it won't disturb anything. I said, it may cause the devil to be disturbed, but I said, people will be healed. Well, he said, there's such a crowd here, you couldn't get a healing line for him. He said, look at all the people sitting in the aisles. So I agreed to wait till that night and turned around and sat down. And they began to pass a little baby, about two and a half years old, over the heads of the congregation. And finally, they sit it in one preacher's lap, and in turn, he sit it in another until that little baby wound up in my lap. And I turned to my interpreter, and I said, what did they put this baby in my lap for? He said, they heard you say that Jesus could heal. This child has never walked, and they want to see you make it walk. I thought, oh, God. I preached your word, and I believe your word, and I believe you'll do exactly what you said you'd do. If I didn't believe it, God, I wouldn't have preached it. Now, I said, I can't talk their language, God, but I said, I know that you can act. And I said, this sermon that you'll preach through healing this child will be far greater than all the messages that I could preach. And I held that little crippled baby up towards heaven, and I said, now, Lord, in the name of Jesus, by the power of God, heal this child and let him walk. And I put the child down and that child started walking across that platform. I don't need to tell you what happened. Those Egyptian people went wild. They all went to talking at one time. They all went to hollering. They went to pushing towards the front. What little front we had left. They began to crowd in around me. Began to push the blind and the lame. The pastor said, now you've done it. Said, you've set the whole church in an uproar. And I said, praise God. I said, now can I pray for the sick? And he said, no, not in here. He said, the police won't let us. He said, they're coming down the aisle right now. And I looked up, and sure enough, the police were coming down the aisle. He said, there's only one way I can get you out of here so you can go over there tonight and do your praying for the sick. And he said, I, I can get you out of here one way, and that's by starting the Lord's Prayer, and these people will get quiet. And he jumped up to the microphone, and he began to pray, Our Father, which art in heaven. And they began to push me down the aisle, and out the door we went. But God answered prayer. Amen. Friend, I believe God, standing in Philadelphia, Mr. Ryan came in my healing line with a cancer on his face. And I laid my hands on that old cancer, and I said, I believe God, right there in the Metropolitan Opera House, that old cancer dropped off in my hands. Amen. That man went down that aisle praising and magnifying God. You'll see just that kind of healings under this tent tonight. You'll see the lame walk and the blind see. You'll see cancers leave people's bodies. My friend, God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. All you have to do is put a little bit of faith in a great big God. And I believe God. I said, I believe God. I believe God will do exactly what he said he did. I believe you in television land there. When I begin this healing line, I believe if you'll pray with me, I believe God will come into that living room where you're bound. Walk into that old bed where you're burning up with a fever. That old cancer inside of you is tormenting. That old tumor is causing you pain. And he'll walk in and lay his hand upon you. That old cancer will go. That old tumor will disappear. For he's the same compassionate Jesus. And he's right there, right by your side, ready to heal you. Amen. How many want a little bit of faith in a great big God? Come on, open your mouths and let's make this tent ring with have faith in God, everybody. Given you Ford Hospital, too. I had the same from how many hospitals? Three, three hospitals. But at Ford, they did the same as they did for Jackie Rhodes. All this tissue. Lord, in thy name, God, heal this woman right now, Lord, by thy power. God, heal her from this old hardening of the arteries. Lord, touch her right now, Lord, in the name of Jesus and by thy power. Amen. Was there any stiffness in your body? All over, All over your body. Especially in the legs and the spine. Especially in the legs and spine. Your spine was stiff from it. Mm -hmm. 
Is that right? How long had it been stiff? This woman has the same thing that Jackie Roach had, scleroderma. It's the starting of it. She's been to three hospitals and they've gave her up. The stiffening is in her back. How many believe God took it out? God in thy name, Lord, right? Now bend over forward. Up again. Down again. Up again. Down again. Up again. There it goes. Better. What? I feel so much better. You don't feel that stiffness there now, do you? No. No. You never will again either. Go praise him for it. Raise your hands and praise God together. I said raise your hands and praise God together. Sinus, eyes, heart. God, make this woman whole for the glory of God. In the name of Jesus, heal the sinus, his heart, and every part of this body, Lord, for Jesus' sake. Amen. Go praise him for it. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Hallelujah. Heart, cancer, and nerves. Cancer's right there. You got Give me some... I don't often anoint with oil, but sometimes I feel like it. I think if there's anything that's of the devil, it's a cancer. I think if there's anything that takes people's lives and eats away at people, it's an old cancer. How many believe that? Say amen. amen. How many can see that cancer there on her face? How many believe God can take it off right now? Lord, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, remove this old cancer, God, by the power of God, in the name of... There it is. Mother, mother, look down at the cancer. Hallelujah. There it is, mother. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. How long that cancer been there? Oh, several months. Several months. It just stayed the same. It wouldn't get well. It wouldn't get no worse. It didn't get no better. Or just stayed there. I just stayed there. Just stayed there. Well, it ain't there now. No, thank it's God. It's in the palm of my hand, ain't it? Go on and praise you. Swallow it. There it went. Go back to your seat and praise God. She had a guard or two and it went away. Raise your hands and praise God. Come and talk to him. Tell him I'm going to pray for him. God's going to open his ears. Amen. Ask him what church he goes to. That's a pretty good try, don't you think? 
A year now. Yeah. You knew he was a dead. Yes, sir. He definitely was. But you know these years are old now. Yes, sir. Are you Catholic too? No, sir. Christ. Your father. Yes, sir. And God healed. Yes, he did. These ears are open. Now, there's somebody gonna have teach you. You have to get these ears and say words. You'll have plenty of help. You'll have plenty of help. Yes, sir. God bless you. Raise your hands and praise God. I said, raise your hands and praise God. My God, what's the matter with you? What now? That they, uh, they said I had a malignant uh, tumor on my shoulder, uh -huh. and they're afraid to cut them. Kind of, I'm diabetic. Afraid to cut the tumor off of your shoulder because you're a diabetic. It's more likely when they did cut, it would spread fast. Spread fast. You believe why you stand here, that old tumor's going? How many believe God can take this great big tumor off of here? Take it out now. She said they're afraid to operate on her. Say that again, will you? They're afraid to cut, afraid of, because I'm diabetic. They're, they're afraid it'll spread all over your body, is that right? They said once they cut, it would spread fast. All right, you're going to stand right here, and when you reach for that tumor, it's going to be gone. Do you believe that? I believe you do believe it, or you wouldn't be here. Lord, in the name of Jesus, shrink this old devilish tumor away, God. Right now, God, there it goes. In the name of Jesus, that alarm's loose right now. Now feel for it. Take your hand, feel for it. Take this hand, feel for it. <laughs> feel good. Can you feel the tumor there now? I don't know, sir. It was on the phone. Take your hand, run it inside of your dress and see if you can find it. Find anything there at all now? Is it sore now? It's, it's still there, but it feels funny. Feels funny? You look back again now and see. Look back again. <laughs> I believe it'll come off. No, I want it to come off right here. Don't you? God, take this tumor away right here, God. Not after a while, but right here, right now, God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now feel for it. Can you feel it now? It feels like it's flabby. Feels like it's flabby. <laughs> Give me five Methodists, four Baptists. Come up here right now. I want you to feel, see if you can find this tumor. Ladies, yes. She stood right here and that tumor melted away to nothing right while she's standing here. right there on that shoulder. Can you feel anything? Can you feel anything? Oh, there, but I don't feel any, any tumor. Just a little temperature shoulder bone. No, nothing. No. Just a bone. No, nothing at all. Are you ever had a tumor there? <laughs> 
Sure, she sure, sure, she sure she had a tumor there. What a sister said, are you sure you ever had one there? Hallelujah. Praise God. Raise your hands, everybody in here, and praise the Lord. I said, raise your hands and praise God. Bless your heart. What church you go to, sister? Church of God. Well, you're a healed church of God. Raise your hands and praise God together. I said, praise him together. I said, praise him together. Praise him together. Just what you have seen under the world's largest gospel tent, none of this has been acted out, but these people have actually been healed by the power of God. And friends, you can be healed too. If you'll just put your faith and trust in God, Jesus will deliver you out of your sicknesses and make you whole. Just as I prayed for these, I couldn't very well lay hands on all of you in television land, but I can do what the Bible tells me to do, and that's send you a handkerchief that I prayed over and believed God over. I hold in my hand one of these handkerchiefs that I've anointed and believed God over to everyone that will write me a letter to Jack Coe, Dallas, Texas. By return mail, I'll send you one of these anointed handkerchiefs. You lay it upon your body. Believe Jesus, and he'll heal you and make you whole. Listen to me. The Bible said they brought handkerchiefs and aprons unto Paul, and when he had prayed over them, they were carried to the sick. The sick was delivered from their diseases, and evil spirits went out from them. All you have to do is write me a letter to Jack Coe, Dallas, Texas, and I'll send you a handkerchief back by return mail. Not only a handkerchief, but I'm going to send you my book on healing instruction on wilt thou be made whole. Are you tired of suffering? Are you tired of sickness? Are you tired of going through pain and agony? Jesus can heal you. When man has done all he can do, then thank God Jesus can make you well. Write me today. My mailing address one more time is Jack Coe, Dallas, Texas. And by return mail, I'll send you the handkerchief that I've anointed and prayed over and the book on Wilt Thou Be Made Whole. Till next week at the same time, may the Lord bless you, may his face shine upon you, and may he keep you. Your prayers, your support, and your letters are needed. Write Jack Coe, Dallas, Texas, today.